Konnichiwa. My name is Thomas. I'm a nutrition scientist. I'm from a company called Tien Lao. Please take a look at my presentation today. Thank you very much. The title of my presentation today is on nutrition science behind dietary fiber. The gut microbiota definition refers to the microorganism found in a specific environment by type. This can include bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa, and so on and so forth. The different bacteria have specific names determined by a branch of science called taxonomy. For example, the probiotic Lactobacillus rhamnosus is actually a species of Lactobacillus, a genus that belongs to the Fumicutes phylum, which is a member of the kingdom of bacteria. There are different bacteria lives on different parts of our body that prefer different foods and perform different functions. There is oral microbiota, there is the skin microbiota, and then there is the gut microbiota. On the other hand, microbiome refers to microorganisms and their genes, which can help play a major role in our health. The gut microbiome plays an important role in the human health and influences the development of chronic diseases ranging from metabolic disease to gastrointestinal disorders. Dietary intake and environment has a profound effect on shaping our gut microbiota. Diverse population of intestinal bacteria will mediate their beneficial effect through fermentation of dietary fiber to produce short-chain fatty acids and endogenous signal that are important for lipid homeostasis and reducing inflammation. The gut microbiota is a complex and challenging to characterize. Microbiota composition are linked to physiological health benefits such as obesity, diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, cardiovascular disease, so on and so forth. The fermentation process is basically breaking down of carbohydrates by bacteria to produce short-chain fatty acids. It is an important function of the large bowel. These short-chain fatty acids are mainly called acetate and butyrate. They are produced primarily from the microbial fermentation of dietary fiber and appears to be beneficial. Not only does dietary fiber fermentation regulate microbial activity in the gut, but short-chain fatty acids also directly modulate the host health effect through a range of tissue-specific mechanisms relating to gut barrier functions, glucohomeostasis, immunomodulation, appetite regulation, and obesity. With the increasing burden of obesity worldwide, the role for gut microbiota generated short-chain fatty acids in protecting against the effect of an energy-dense diet will offer an intriguing new avenue for regulating metabolic health, heart disease risk, and etc. At the same time, we are also aware that not all dietary fibers are fermented equally in the body. Using the simulator of the human intestinal microbial ecosystem, otherwise known as the SHINE model, we have seen two dietary fiber being fermented differently at the different parts of the large intestines. For example, a very common fiber that we know, such as indolin, are fermented mainly focusing on the ascending area only, as illustrated here in the graph, through the production of short-chain fatty acids. There are very little amount of short-chain fatty acids found in the transverse, 
and in the descending area. When it comes to another dietary fiber known as Promitor, soluble corn fiber, using the same amount of dietary fiber and the same experiment, we were able to see that fermentation process in the large, large colon are mainly distributed throughout the three segments known as the ascending, the transverse, and the descending results of the production of short-chain fatty acids. This experiment demonstrated that soluble corn fiber are fermented more slowly throughout the large intestines and therefore is more beneficial to the human body, allowing a more even distribution of short-chain fatty acids through the large colon and better gastrointestinal tolerance. Here is an example of how the SHINE model looks like. SHINE is a unique scientifically validated dynamic model of the complete gastrointestinal tract in order for us to study the physical, chemical, enzymatic, microbial parameter in a GI tract in a controlled in vitro setting. The model consists of five reactors representing the stomach, small intestines, and the three regions of the large intestines, such as the ascending, the transverse, descending colon. Careful control of these environmental parameters in these reactors will allow us to obtain complex and stable microbial communities, which are highly similar in both structure and functions of the different regions in the human colon. This model can be used to study the metabolic fate of food, its microbial compounds over a period of a few weeks. Now, applying the same theory that soluble corn fiber promitor is fermented in the large colon producing short chain fatty acids, we have seen it to be benefiting when it comes to enhancing calcium absorption. When the amount of short-chain fatty acids is increased in the large colon, the acidity has been able to lower the pH in the gut. Minerals such as calcium become more soluble in the blood due to the lowering pH and is more readily absorbed. The second theory is regarding to short-chain fatty acids being an important energy to the colon. When the colon are better nourished with butyrate and acetate, the functionality of the colon will improve and we have seen that the colon is better maximized in the surface area. This is also another theory that helps us to explain why nutrients are better absorbed. Promitor soluble corn fiber by now has been extensively studied in a number of clinical trials, including animal models, trials involving school children, teenagers, and also postmenopausal women. Different increase on the percentage of calcium absorption in adolescents has been observed following the supplementation of soluble corn fiber. We have seen that at least 12% of increase in calcium absorption in adolescents, which equals to about 15 grams of calcium, or 1.8% of bone calcium accrual in just one year. Given that 25% of our bone is developed during pubertal growth spur, this potentially yearly accrual is highly relevant when we are able also to see that there are increase in terms of bone calcium retention in postmenopausal women. About 7% of bone calcium was retained, then it could also translate to 18 grams of bone calcium, which is about 2.5% of total bone mineral content accrual over a year. Promitor can also help to offset some of this bone loss in postmenopausal women. There are further research has been completed as well, whereby it is showing that fibers and calcium interaction has been optimal. 
12 grams of fiber, such as parmesan, plus 600 milligrams of calcium per day, has also been studied and has been completed in year 2019. The published study to date in this area include one of the study that was published by Rishner and colleagues in the year 2014. This paper indicates that after just 24 hours of promethor soluble corn fiber supplementation, there was a significant increase in calcium absorption when compared to no supplementation. In year 2016, this study was further extended to explore the dosage that is required to demonstrate such health benefits in the area of calcium absorption. And it was found that 10 grams of soluble corn fiber intake per day is sufficient to able to increase calcium in the bone density for these teenagers. Besides better calcium absorption, Jackman and colleagues also published a paper in year 2016 reporting that just 10 grams of soluble corn fiber promotor able to increase calcium retention in postmenopausal women. Based on calculation, this demonstrated that 2.5% of total body bone mineral content can be helped to retain in a year, reducing bone density loss in postmenopausal women. When it comes to dietary intake and immune response, a thorough understanding of the gastrointestinal tract is required. The gastrointestinal tract is one of the first line of entry to pathogens, and at the same time, it also interacts with dietary components. It is very important for us to know that the gastrointestinal tract provides the highest level of human protection and yet extreme minimal hypersensitivity interactions with dietary antigens such as protein. So how does dietary fiber play a part in human health? As we know, Dietary fiber intake is fermented to produce short-chain fatty acids. Studies have shown that the increase of production of short-chain fatty acids after fermentation of dietary fiber will increase antibody production. Secondly, the direct contact of lactic acid bacteria with immune cells in the gut would help to activate the immune system. With the presence of fiber, it increases the amount of lactic acid bacteria, as we mentioned before. Lastly, when short-chain fatty acids is increased in production in the large colon, it lowers the pH. And because of that, the colon increases the production of mucin. Mucin is just like a coating. It serves as a protective barrier to prevent harmful bacteria from entering the bloodstream throughout the gut. With these, uh, the current what we know or the potential mechanism in terms of the benefit of dietary fiber in our immune health system. Therefore, in year 2017, Costabil and colleagues has published a paper done on 40 healthy elderly human volunteers that's aged between 60 to 80 years old and they receive a three-week treatment intervention with either probiotic lactobacillus ramosos GG combined with soluble corn fiber promethor at 12 grams of fiber per day, or just soluble corn fiber alone, or just placebo. The results of these studies have shown that the combination on a symbiotic of Lactobacillus ramosos GG with soluble corn fiber promethor can promote innate immunity by increasing natural killer cells activities. Soluble corn fiber also showed a significant and positive effect on the immune system, whereby it's evidence 
from a decrease of the pro-inflammatory cytokines into leukin-6. With that, I shall conclude my presentation for today. Thank you so much for viewing, and I wish you a pleasant day. Thank you.